All of that joy is coming from within me. If I know this, my life changes. I'm not dependent anymore on anyone, anything, any situation. And I tell you this not only from theoretically, I know this for sure. The Ali, for the first time at Chinmay Bhubuti, we had an overseas Acharyas conference. So there was around 55 Acharyas outside of India, in various countries, and we all met in Pune at Chinmay Bhubuti. Swamiji was talking about it yesterday. Since I had to go for the conference, I decided to explore Bharat a little bit more. Bharat is India, for those who don't know what that means. It's a classier form to call India. And uh, so I went to Surat, and they have a place called the Haryomashram there. And what it is, it's a Mohan Ashram, just like you did Monam this morning. So I show up at this ashram, and it's in Gujarat, and I've never been to Gujarat, and I'm not Gujarati, so I don't speak Gujarati. And the manager's there, and he starts talking to me. And I have no idea what he's saying. Then he takes me into this room, and he takes me, and he shows me around, and he starts speaking me in Gujarati again, and I'm just, what is, I, there's no communication going on. So he shows me these three sheets in English, so yes, I was going to read them. Then he is about to leave the room, and this I caught. He says that if you suffocate, press this emergency button. Then he left the room, and he locked it from the outside. So for one week, I was by myself in a room that was 18 feet by 18 feet. The ceilings were probably 12 feet high, with a bed, a swing, three chairs, and a desk. There was no interaction with anyone. I didn't speak to anyone. I didn't see anyone. All they did was, like, imagine a little drawer like this, and they would give me food through there. They'd give me tea at 4.45 a.m., lunch was at 10, tea was at 3.45 p.m., and dinner was at 5. They would give you the food or whatever, you would eat, rinse the dishes, and give it back. After day three, I was so happy, peaceful with the experience that I felt like I could live there forever. If they gave me English books, and if they gave me an electrical adapter for my iPod, I felt I could stay there forever. In that situation, I had the absolutely, absolute bare minimum. Whatever food they give you, you can't ask for more. You don't have anything other than what you're wearing and what's in a small suitcase. But just sheer joy. I loved it. I honestly felt like it could stay there forever, regardless of how hot or how rainy it was. Why? Because you realize that joy is coming from within. You don't need anything. You just have to bring that calmness into the mind. I just did this a month ago. And I would encourage all of you to do it, but you probably go crazy. So prepare yourself. But the point is, it's coming from within. And sleep is the best proof of that. You don't even know what country you're in or what time it is. Completely oblivious. But that joy, whenever you have a problem, what do you want to do? Go to sleep. Right? That's what we do. We run away. It's sleep, which is fine. It's not fine, but it's, it's enjoyable. Our own life, and that's what I'm saying. We all live our lives, but how often are we thinking about our lives? How much are we learning from our day-to-day -day experiences? Now, is anyone here too happy? Does anyone here in this room have too much happiness? Do you have too much happiness? You? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're the first person that ever said that, ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to disregard that comment. <laughs> like, what do you do then? You just say, you go give me more sadness? Is that what you do in this situation? <laughs> Is anyone happy? Like, do you know anyone that says I'm too happy, like I would like more sadness in my life? Or like more tragedy? No. And I want more and more happiness. Because... That's my true nature. Infinite happiness. If you had anything 
If you had too much water, what would happen to you? You'd die, too much oxygen, die. If you had too much food, you'd die, too much sleep, you'd die. Anything else that you had too much of would cause problems, it would cause sorrow. If not death, it would cause sorrow. But happiness, you can never have too much happiness because that's who you are. The spirit is of the nature of unconditional, unobstructed, unlimited happiness. Can water ever be too watery? Have you, has anyone ever said that or heard that? <laughs> About a first experience is happening here. Because that's the nature of water. It is water. Is air ever too airy? Like that's what it is. Just like you and I, we are happiness. That is our nature. But we don't live like that, unfortunately. So happiness is me. So where is the spirit? That's me too. The spirit is happiness. I am happiness, so I am the spirit. Again, the spirit is happiness. I am happiness, so that has to mean that I am the spirit as well. And some of you are like, okay, I don't know what the spirit is, or I don't like the spirit. Call it whatever you want to call it. Consciousness, life, energy, bliss, Brahman, Jesus, Krishna, whatever you want to call it. I like to call it life, because that's what makes sense to me. I am life. Whatever word works for you. Vedanta is the study of happiness. Vedanta is the study of the spirit, is the study of the self. They're all synonyms. And if I am unhappy today, then only knowledge about the self will help me discover happiness. If I am unhappy today, meaning I don't know the spirit, I don't know happiness, and only knowledge of the spirit, knowledge of the self, knowledge of happiness will suffice. Nothing else can make me or help me discover that absolute happiness. If I'm ignorant of myself, what is the antidote or the cure to ignorance? Knowledge. That's it. If I'm ignorant about the Russian language, What's going to cure that? Knowledge of the Russian language and nothing else. Even if I live in Russia, but if I don't have knowledge of the language, does that cure my ignorance of the language? No. I need that knowledge. So remember, again, this statement that can change your life forever. That all this happiness that I experience in life is coming from within me. I am the source of happiness. And all I ever do and all I ever will do is for happiness. That should be the focus of our life. That should be the most important aspect and pursuit of our life is happiness. And it's very beautifully presented in Peaceful Warrior. How many people have seen the movie Peaceful Warrior? I know the team from DC has and a few other people. When he meets, you should all watch the movie, so you won't really understand what I'm saying. But when the disciple meets the guru, the disciple tells the guru that, you know, I have so many friends, I party so much, I have such great grades, etc., etc., etc. And then the guru asks him one question, are you happy? And he never said anything. And then he, the disciple responds with, what does that have anything to do with it? <laughs> What does that have anything to do with it? And the guru looks at him and says, it has everything to do with it. Why the grades? Why the friends? Why the parties? Why the appearance? It's for happiness. And if you're not achieving that happiness, what's the point? This is what we're going to be studying for the next four days. The making of a spiritual student. Now that the carrot's been given to you, happiness, we have to understand how we're going to get that carrot. Fair enough? <laughs>